my experiences are as horrific as some of these other veterans and what I'm feeling I may be able to deal with. Or sometimes you tend to downplay things. What do you mean by that, Mark? Uh, well, basically, looking at um, whatever stressor you're dealing with and whether or not you're able to maintain functionality. Prior to being diagnosed with it, in 2015, back in 2008 and 2013, and the years since the war, did you ever think you had it? No, sir. Why not? Well, because I didn't think that it affected my livelihood the way that I envisioned those who truly suffer from PTSD did. So you want to mark for identification as Defendant's Exhibit T? Of the total deployment health records from 20, 20, 2008 and 2013. Yes, it's in real base. Yeah, my Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mark is showing you what's been marked for identification purposes as Defendant's Exhibit T. It's approximately 41 pages of documents. You've seen that before? <coughs> yes, sir. And what are they? This is the uh, post-deployment health assessment records from see at least the first uh, the second deployment uh, well, that's the first 10 pages yes sir okay take a look at the uh, next 10 pages of the next five one here is April 2009 so that would have been after my uh, first one okay, so is it does it have both the 2009 and 2013 uh, post deployment health assessments yes sir and those are signed I, I believe by Rosemary Camacho a her and one of the professionals there yes and other professionals essentially what are those they each of them are about 10 pages and some other documents what are they they're, they're, ba they're basically uh, forms with bubbles that you fill out, fill out on what you've experienced, and as a result of those experiences, what you may or may not be feeling. For instance, where is this form filled out, and what's going on in this post-deployment assessment? Well, most of these assessments, um, specifically the post-deployment after, are done in a mass production uh, type event where just came home from a year you're with your 200 or 500 people you're all kind of cattle herded into a controlled area and you just you're it's like a cookie cutter and you just stand in line waiting for your name to be called and you all fill out these 10 page forms as best you can yes sir and it asks you a number of questions such as uh, any injuries during your <coughs> deployment have you seen encountered dead bodies Great danger of being killed, been engaged at. Um, alcohol use? Alcohol use. How many times you drink and how much you drink? Yes. And in filling out all these uh, circles and filling out all the, the forms, um, Marty, are you trying to downplay anything as you, test, as you indicated? Yes. Why? Why do people downplay it? Objection as to why people downplayed it. Why did Answer you? as to why he downplayed it. Please rephrase it. Why, why, why would you downplay it? Because it could be a career ender and because it may not be something that you necessarily feel meets what your personal threshold of these symptoms are. Okay. 
Now, that contains, again, both of them. Yes. Sir. Both, both deployments. And it contains a certification from whoever the doctor is or a medical professional. Did you actually see a doctor? Well, uh, throughout the filling out portion, you're just in, in a line. And then towards the end, they, the doctor says, OK, do you have anything you want to talk about? And you say yes or no, and you, you're done. OK, and for instance, how long does this whole process take? The entire out processing from yes. the deployment? Oh, a month at least. How long does the post deployment health assessment take then? Several hours? Yeah, mostly lining up. Okay. And where, where is this being taken? Where is this taking place? It's again, it's in a controlled area, much like um, a high school gym, something to that. On the base? Yes. Like a hangar or something? Or a gym? Just a like a small theater stadium type. And everybody's in line filling out their forms, a couple of hundred of them. Different stations, yes, sir. And then you meet up with a doctor in a cubicle or not at all? Sometimes not at all, but just at the end, it's kind of a checkout. Moving the evidence are on exhibit T. No objection. All right, no objection. Do you have any, is there any such, is there such a thing as a different level or form of PTSD? Objection beyond the scope of this Have you learned? <coughs> do you have, is there, is there such thing? Do you have any different type of PTS or, or Either objection. It's a state. You've been receiving treatment and since your diagnosis in 2015? Market for your PTSD? Yes. Where is that? At the VA. Okay. And how is your development been through that? It's been positive. And what is your diagnosis from your doctor? I have PTSD. Has Dr. Stewart uh, considered the issue of PTSD in, in, in his treatment of you? Objection. Yes. Sustained as to what Dr. Stewart's been doing. Uh, with Marky, are you saying in this case that PTSD made you do it? No, sir. Are you saying that PTSD had anything to do with this case? No, sir. Was it a contributing factor in any way? Maybe just to my alcohol consumption and blood alcohol content. Did it make you shoot, Bertie? No, sir. Did it make you flip out and fire the gun? No, sir. Mark, has this been a nightmare for you? Every day. Explain how this is affecting you. Objection irrelevant. Sustained. So Mark, what happened that night? She's trying to help her brother. Nothing further. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we will uh, break for lunch and then we will resume with the question of the uh, by the government. Um, please remember my instructions about not discussing this panel with anyone. Uh, please leave your notebooks on the chair. They'll be there when you return. Please rise for the jury.